Hey, 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 hey. Hello, we're here today with Lee Deutsch. Um, it is, uh, what is it, May 20th? Friday, May 20th. Uh huh. And so we're just going to have a conversation. Hello, <laughs> Lee, how are you today? Hey, Christy, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we don't ever start out in the exact same place. Um, I don't know where you want to start. I, the first thing that comes to mind with me is your 100 year farm. Okay, well, that's a good place to start, I think, because our, our, we're, our farm has been in the Deutsch family, the, the original part, since 1849. Oh my gosh, that so, is way early. So, uh, so I'm the... My 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 boys are the. Let's well, see. I I have to do the math to figure it out. But I I'd, I'd be the uh, third generation, so they'd be the fourth generation. Yeah, the fourth generation. So uh, it it's been expanded since then. But the original part, and 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 my youngest son Kyle and his wife and two sons live in 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 the house that is a part of the. Original, the, the original, the, the, the original, the original, parson. in the house where my brother and I grew up on, and and so that 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 that's a part of it. I mean, it's it's been ex, it's been expanded for uh, since that time, but it, uh, it it it's been it's been in the family since 1849. It's kind of it's kind of something that we're proud of. So, uh, and I'm thinking too that that's. You know, pretty much the original time this area was settled, 1849. It's it's close to it. See, we we have we have a a a, a document on some on some of that land that was deeded to us when uh, Zachary Taylor Zachary Taylor was president of the United States. In fact, at my 75th birthday, that Darren had that up on. I didn't over. see that. And Actually, you know what? I did see it, and I meant to take a copy of it, and I it's, forgot. Uh, well, Darren. I have a stapler if you'd like to stapler them. I'll bring that. Between Darren and 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 my and and and, and my brother, they'd they'd have they they'd have that. So yeah. Yeah. Because Darren Darren's taken a great big hold. Darren's for for explicit Darren's my oldest son. So he he's taken a great interest in 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 heritage and, and that. So. I'll have to talk to Darren about it. Okay. Because Darren knows everything about the cemetery, too, okay. <laughs> which is a wonderful thing. Because for a long time, nobody was doing too much of anything on the cemetery, except well, he, for Darren. He well, he he did inherit some of that from Virgil because Virgil was really pretty good at he it. He was, yes. yes. So yes. Yeah. 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 He was. He was. So you've been a farmer all your life. I w I've been a farmer all my life, except for the time when I when I went away to college, and <clears throat> I went to. I went to I went, I graduated from Primoni High School in 1959. I went to to Iowa State University for one whole year, and I and I, they were on the quarter system. And until Thanksgiving, it was another year uh, of my second year. And the re the reason I went to uh, Iowa State was that uh, I was recruited f to to play football there, but you have to remember that. My junior year, Cremoni didn't win a game, and since that time, they've had a state championship. So, <laughs> so they're not re they're not recruiting football players from from a place that that, that 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 lost every every game. But I got out to Iowa State, and they they at that time Iowa State had wanted me to 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 uh, to, to go to uh, junior college first and then transfer. In. But uh -huh. I fell in love with with uh, with Iowa State, and. While I while I, while I was there, there's, I never got a degree from Iowa State, but I did meet my my, my first wife there. So you met Sharon. So, oh, I met Sharon in Iowa. So and and then the other thing is that while I was at Iowa State, I really became because I've always been real in 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 the livestock business, always like 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 cattle, and I really became very into judging in Iowa State. I like to say that. That the kids in Iowa have been judging cattle since they were potty trained. So they, so, 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 so <laughs> they know their cattle. They, in they, Iowa. they, they have a, they had an advantage over us. But so I, I stayed out for a while. Then after uh, my dad had gotten kind of sick a little bit, and mm. so I stayed out for a while. And during that time, I was not going to school. 
I picked up a few chemistry courses at the, at the junior college, and then I and then I became uh, I looked I did a lot of scouting around, and that was way before the internet, so you had to you had to do it. But I looked for a smaller school that had a real good lifestyle judging coach, and that's how I came upon Arkansas State University. A lot of people ask how, how I, so that's how I ended up down there because. They had a Dr. L. N. Hochsteller, who was the livestock judging coach, who was my advisor while I was there, was really my mentor, and it, it it was a great place to go to school because we got to do a lot of stuff that that as far as dealing with with livestock that is safe for the the vet students, and since they didn't have a vet department, we got to do it. So it's. It's one of the great, I mean, one of the wise decisions I made in my life. So. And where's Arkansas State? It's in Jonesboro, Arkansas, in the northeast, in the northeast corner of Arkansas, and we aren't the Razorbacks. No, I we're, know that. I know the we're, Razorbacks we're, we're, are... We're, we're, we're the Red Wolves. The Red Wolves. We were the <laughs> Indians when I was there, but they've changed it. They're more well, PC now. You can't be the Indians, right? right. So, so, so the we're the Wolves. Red Wolves. So. <laughs> Well, you know Dave's from Arkansas too, so he's, That's right. he's the Razorback fan. Yeah, okay. I know where the Razorbacks are. The Razorback mm -hmm. fans are, you know, they're loud and boisterous. They're woo pig suey. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> That's exactly what they are. No, they are. So, anyhow, but it 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 it, it, it it's kind of like it's kind of like like being in, in ag and being in Illinois and going to Illinois State rather than rather than. U of I yeah. or something like that. Yeah, you know, but, yeah. But but you got the education you needed and wanted. And, and you got you got a lot more hands on than what you than what you would otherwise. Mm -hmm. So so mm -hmm. it's it's a decision I've never regretted. So then after college, you came back to the family farm and started farming. I started farming. Graduated from college in August August the fifteenth of of nineteen sixty four, and 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 started farming. I, the one another little. Twist to that is that Sharon graduated from Iowa State the, the June of of, of sixty four, uh, and we got married on June the sixth. So I I had to go ten weeks of ten weeks of summer school down there. So we kind of had it. I guess you could call it a ten week honeymoon with me, <laughs> me with me being a, a, a college student. So so you know so the, yeah. So then, 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 then I, then we, then we came back. Then I came back to the farm and started farming. And but I, I suppose I, you'd already been farming from the time. I've been a farmer from all the time. Yeah. In fact, one of the, one of the, the fact things that I was very proud of, I think, is that I had several of my high school friends say to me, "Well, if you go away to college and." You, and if you graduate from college, you'll never come back and farm. So I guess I wanted to just, just Prove show them right. that. Prove and, right. a, and a lot of, and since since my generation, there's a lot of them that do that now. But mm -hmm. but it was it was maybe kind of well. First of all, it wasn't real common to go to college, and then and then if you did go to college, it wasn't to come to come back to the farm. Mm -hmm. But it was something I always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. was, and, and, and I kind of did it to have some high school friends to show them that I did it. <laughs> <laughs> so when you went away to college, did that change your outlook on farming and how you farmed from the way you had been taught as a child and maybe some of the things your dad did? Uh, that's a good question. Um, well, my dad was always, <clears throat> my dad, I, I always really considered my dad uh, Progressive farmer that he was progressive in his, his thoughts and progressive in, 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 in what we did and and, and I, I can remember being I, it was in high school and we were always very active he was very active in soil and water conservation because mm -hmm. he always was a believer in, in that and one one you know there's your your parents say a lot of things to you and a lot of them you probably don't remember but. But this, the, but but my dad said that if that we had to, as farmers, we had the responsibility to make the land better than when we took it over, mm -hmm. and and by that he meant by 
practices of conservation practices and soil erosion. So, and that's something that just always stuck in my mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. And then another thing, going back a little bit to my days at, Ar at Arkansas State and Dr. Hochstetler, and I'm and. I'm, and Sharon can, I mean, Marianne can relate to that. I say this often, that Dr. Hochstetler used to say in, in lecturing us that, you know, you you, you, guys, you don't need to remember everything that's that's being taught you, but you need to know where where to find the answers. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of truth in that. I think so. And of course, now with with being able to with the internet and with like Marianne takes her phone and look, it's a lot easier to find the answers it is. than what it used yeah, yeah. to be. You have a question, uh, and you say, "Let me find the answer." Yes, yeah, or, or if you got it. Yeah, so, so that that that's that's a, that's a that's a whole lot easier. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and if your dad set you that kind of an example right from the get go, you, there wasn't anything to, and maybe new some new methods or new tricks of the trade, but the basic philosophy would have stayed the same. Yeah. yeah. Now, did Dave, Dave farm right there too? Dave, yeah. See, David's six years younger than me, so then he he didn't he he didn't go go away to college, but but we we farm we farm together. I mean, we, mm -hmm. I mean, once we he he uh, he he was a senior in high school when I when I when I graduated from from Cremoni, and then we just started farming together in mm -hmm. partnership with, with with my dad after that. So when you were a kid, what would a typical day on the farm be like? Well, we we had, at the, at the time I was, till I went away to college, we mill cows. And if you mill cows, there's a, there's a lot of work. And, 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 and my mother and dad were very active in doing the the farming, I mean, and, and, and farming, and one, one, one story or, or about me or to say about because I played football, and and, and if you had you had football practices before the school year started was two days, so really, my my parents did it, sometimes it would be hard just to break away to take me to football practice or pick me up from football practice because they didn't have a driver's license at that time. So my dad came up with the idea that we had a Super C tractor that I could drive the Super C tractor to football practice <laughs> and, then, and then drive home and, I, and, I, and, and, and I'd be legal and traffic wasn't what it is now, okay? Right. Let me, yeah. I mean, it, it, it wasn't, you took some back roads, so. And you weren't that far away from that. I wasn't right? that far away right. from home because, the, in fact, the other day I ran into a person at Dr. Marcotte's office that talked about that he had walked for, for, for football practice afterwards. Well, I didn't have to do that. And a Super C tractor was nice. You didn't have a cab. And it was nice after having a practice in the, in, in August to, that that nice breeze against you really felt good, okay? <laughs> so did you plow, you know, your way to school and plow <laughs> no, your way I didn't, back? No, I didn't do that. <laughs> no, I just, I just, I kind of stayed on, on a, what the, the part about being on exchange was the business part I had to be yeah. on, and I was hoping, you know, but you just didn't have to, and it, and it kind of got to be, it it, it kind of got to be known that you know Deutsch has got his tractor in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, but. so now when you were a kid, you had milk cows. Did you have chickens and? We had some. We had we had like a, we had chickens. We had a hundred ch chickens. I did not like chickens. I, I didn't. I mean, I, I I love eggs, but I'm not a I'm not a real fan of chickens. We had we had milk cows but then when I when I was when I was going to be when I was a, going to be a, a, a freshman in, in, in high school I bought four shorthorn bred heifers to start a shorthorn herd and I really hadn't realized this till my recent 75th birthday when my brother said about it because I really was gonna I really had a busy going to buy gonna buy, uh, I bought two Angus heifers to have, but they were so mean. Well, well, David was like, like the, so I was like 13 years old at this time, so David would have been s seven. 
and they just charged him, you know, against the fence. And, and so I just said, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have cattle that are gonna, be gonna that attack old. my brother. <laughs> right. So I did, and, and I guess another story about really getting started, Chris. We always milk cows, and when you and if you if you grow up on a kind of on a dairy farm, milking cows is a is a it's it's you know twenty four seven. I mean, mm -hmm. we we had it. We had the 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 deal was that every other Sunday we did have a hired man, and every other Sunday you were, you were spoke you you that you got off when my dad got off and then the hired man got off, but the hired man that we had wasn't the most reliable person that you didn't know for sure. If he was going to show up, yeah, because Sunday does come after Saturday night. <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly right. Yeah. So, so I always just so my parents just well, then I just kind of enjoyed going out to help him. So I, I just go out and help. I mean, I by helping, I mean you, you, you it, it wasn't like 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 milk like the like the milking cows at the dairy farm over over in Indiana is. I mean it was you, you carried a milk bucket into the milk house and dumped it through a strainer and all that. So was there machines or did you No, we had machines. Okay. It wasn't by hand. We, we uh -huh. had we had machines. But but so um so I and and and, and because he was the, the what you know we alluded to about Saturday night came he was a character and when you're and when you're a, a freshman in high school it's kind of you you you, ha you have fun being around him okay? yeah, so, yeah. So, so that that was the other side of it that, I mean that situation so did after a while you become the, the Sunday hired man <laughs> was it, no was it, no why well, I no he he uh, I just helped him if he if he showed mm -hmm. and if he didn't show up, well, then my, my dad and I were doing uh -huh. that responsibilities of uh -huh. the house. So uh -huh. now you were, I mean, you're one of our younger interviewees, so there were tracks. You never remember a time when when horses were farm animals, do you? You didn't no, ever have that. That was way did. before your time. No, I I will say the the one thing that uh, that did happen is that I don't. Thrashing instead of before the com before the combine you went you went out and you had thrashing groups, and we had a, a a neighbor that moved in moved into the neighborhood that that thrashed yet, and I I went in in, in another high school classmate of mine we went and helped that person thrash so I did experience I did I did experience that mm -hmm. but but otherwise no. We we always had we always had, we always had uh, tractors, mm -hmm. and then you had cattle all along, and then had, had cattle all along, and, and 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 we never had any hogs. We did okay. The story about having a horse or a pony, I guess that's a story for for my start, and maybe in the in the cattle business. My dad had a pony when he grew up, and he enjoyed it, a pony immensely. So he thought that that his his son should should have a pony. Well, I never rode the pony. I didn't like riding the pony or anything <laughs> like that. So I said to my dad once, I said, "Dad, would your feelings be hurt if I sold if I sold the pony because I wanted to buy?" And we had a na our, a neighbor who was Walter Sagerbrook was a good neighbor, and they had a lot of Hereford cattle. And Walter, Walter was always teasing me about about having a Hereford, Hereford steer. I said if I if I if I could sell my pony and and buy a buy a steer, will you, will your feelings be hurt? And Dan says no. He says I, I gave you the pony so you can do what you want to do it with. So so I sold the pony sold the pony for a hundred twenty five dollars. <throat> I had my hundred twenty five dollars in my hand. I went to Walter Sigerbrook and I said, "Will you sell me a steer for one hundred twenty-five dollars?" And he did. So that's. The, the, but but I wasn't really going to have. I I really wasn't going to have Hereford cattle because, it yeah you, you, when you're, in, you don't really have, you don't really have the breed that your neighbor does. You want to have something different. Different. <laughs> so, so that's. Was that your first steer of your own? Yeah, that was my first steer. My and my dad was real good. My dad. 
my dad, I mean, uh, he, he, I, it didn't cost me anything to to feed it. He he paid for all the feed, and yeah. and and I so and I sold the steer for three hundred and sixty dollars. So that was a pretty good oh, market. I would say that was a shrewd yeah. business. Yeah. So see, shrewd so. business. And then you had a lot of uh, crops, right? Was it mostly corn that you grew? Yeah, we grew. Well, we grew we grew corn, but we also grew at that time in that era. We grew a lot of oats because mm -hmm. you you had oh. you had a lot. So so we. We, we we grew we we grew a lot of oats. How come they don't grow oats so much anymore? There just isn't any any demand for it. And the other thing is, the oats that's growing in this area doesn't have a real good test weight. And by that I mean a test. By by it just it doesn't it it's thirty oh, standard for oats is thirty two pounds. But oats that's growing up in the Red River Valley up in the Dakotas. I'll be in a, in the forties, and mm -hmm. and the, those horse people, they 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 want that oats, so that they that it just gets shipped mm -hmm. in. So yeah. so the oats are more um, uh, for animal food. Yes. And since we don't have a ton of animals around here no, anymore, no, no, there's no requirement for the oats. No. So how I know this is a little bit of departure, but how did you get involved in politics? Uh, well, I've always liked. Politics. It was. I mean. I remember your father as being quite an orator. Yeah. Yeah. My, 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 yeah. And I. And I. And I always liked. I always liked politics. And and it, it was. It, I. I. I guess. My, I have a. I have a long record of, of of running for offices and 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 not being elected. But. But I. But I. But I. But I just. I just like. I just had to like politics. I get, you know, it just, it just was appealing to me. Was right. there a particular thing that motivated you the first time you stood up and said, "I'm going to do something about this"? Or if you think a cause that, that made you? Or was there some? Well, I, I, I would think that I'm. That's a good question to ask me. As I, as I relate to go back to, I, I, I think one, one thing that would would be that that I, I, my. It would have been. Let's see. I'm trying to think of when I was elected to the to the school board in 1977. 1977. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I some of what was going on in, in our in our local school board, I really didn't. I wasn't a big fan of. And I had I had I had three children that that were in the school system. So so I think that that would be. A time, it would be that I decided that That's I wanted to run to to change things mm -hmm. or, 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 or to set it on a different a different pattern. I yeah. think we could use you to run again. Was that Crete Money to a one? Crete Money, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it's if you want if that yeah. should be mentioned in That's this like, or not. But I just don't know everything well enough to know when they split and all that. So no, it's 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 yeah, it was Crete It's Crete Money, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and 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 I like to say that that I. I, I, w I was fortunate enough to first t to to get elected to the school board uh -huh. by by a large plurality at that time, but to, to but then in three and a half years to get voted out because of, of a principal that we who, who we terminated. But uh -huh. but but anyhow, uh, <coughs> in, in in those days, to, I mean, you meet a lot of people. I've, I've met a lot of nice people in, in my life. I've met some undesirables, but we're not going to talk about them. But, but and, 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 and I have some real lifetime friends that were that were from the, from the, from the, the school board, mm -hmm. really. So, yeah. So that was that was my first. That was that that, that But previous to that, I had run. For for Moni Township office too, but 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 didn't get didn't get elected. But but then uh, after that, then I decided to run for the for the county board, mm -hmm. and I, I I like one of the, one of the fine things is you met a lot of people running for the county board, and 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 also 
like going to Iowa State and meeting my first wife. I met my second wife. Wow. We, 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 is, yeah. is running as a cop for the. We, be, be we, it, when did you run? To, huh? When did you run for Will County Board? I ran for the Will County Board in 1998. Oh, oh, okay. Na so, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, there, you know, there's oh, six, so, yeah. really. And so you met Marianne on the county board? Yeah, well, yeah. we were both candidates. At the, uh -huh. the, you have to remember that the, the way that Will County at that time was, there was three county board members from each, from a district. You were, so, so three of you could get elected, and of course, the other story, the other part about Mary Ann and I is, she was a Republican and I was a Democrat. So, so. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. So, so, anyhow, but. Kind of, sort of ran against each other, but not really. Uh, <laughs> Did you both win? We both won. The yeah. consequence of that, though, was, before that, I was the chairman of the executive committee and a pretty strong leader on the board, but I got punished because they thought I helped him get elected. Oh. So by one vote I lost that position. Didn't really take my ability to do the job away, but they, it was party politics at its worst. That was your punishment that for consorting with a Democrat. Democrat. The Democrat. Mm -hmm. They couldn't believe I would date a Democrat. It was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and then he got Peer pressure, I'm telling you. There's always peer yeah. pressure isn't there. <laughs> my, my husband got a t-shirt for his birthday that says Dad's Against, da Dad's against Daughters Dating Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, if, you know, if we're going to bring politics into, the, into this, which is really fine with me, but really okay with me, and, and basically I'm a, I, I, my, I, I'm really a fiscal responsible person. Which, uh, but I'm gonna add my but was that I strongly disliked Ronald Reagan, and you have to remember what the farm economy went through in the 1980s when Ronald Reagan was president, and and we used to send out a. Christmas letter, Sharon and I and the family, and Sharon said one time that that she was going to have it put, put in there that Lee is saying, or, or, or if we can, that hopefully we'll survive Ronald Reagan. Now, Sharon's mother was a real he, he, strong person, you know. I mean, I think people liked Ronald Reagan because they remembered him from the movies. But you're probably right. But but. So, so she was. So she didn't introduce me, and she and we got a great relationship being a mother-in-law, son-in-law. Remember, this is in Iowa, this Republican in Iowa. Iowa. <laughs> this is in Iowa, so, and she said, "This is this is Lee Deutsch, my son-in-law. Other than his strong dislike for Ronald Reagan, he's a great person." <laughs> <laughs> so, what did Reagan do to the farm economy? Well, because I don't know. He ruined it. He 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 he, he just. Yeah. Is that the subsidies and things like that that he? Was, yeah, and the, the prices were terrible. Uh -huh. I mean, it's just, and, and I get, I get very. <laughs> I'm not going to say a thing because I've talked to an awful lot of farmers, and I remember. I mean, my, part of the time was though the consequences of what had happened previously, not unlike what happened to the real estate market then. The bankers were encouraging farmers, particularly in Iowa and in Illinois, to to go out and borrow money against their land, and then. They, um, they had um, leveraged it so much that the value came down. And when the value came down, the bankers came and said, okay, you're like calling the loans. So many people lost their land at the time. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you can pinpoint that on Ronald Reagan because it began before. And, and the other thing that he did, he, was, uh, he wasn't as open on trade for farmers. I mean, that's one of the, one of the consequences even today that we have to look at is all these fair trade agreements have been outstanding for farmers, but it's hurt the American workers. So there's mm -hmm. got to be somehow a balance right. between the two. Right. But right. that's, you know, I'm not a Ronald Reagan fan necessarily. I'm not a Ronald Reagan Republican. I don't, I, I mean, I, yeah, I find it interesting that all, people are always alluding back to the day of being Republicans today. I'm not saying he was a bad guy, but I've never met anyone like Lee who hated him. Who mm -hmm. had all these reasons, except mm -hmm. that I do remember that is what happened at the time. And 
the other thing is that I, I will say this, I mean, just to be politically correct or bipartisan on it, my father was a strong, strong a advocate of FDR. And he and I used to get into some real, not heated, but very lively, <laughs> lively, lively, <laughs> right, lively conversations because I would say to him, I realize what FDR did and what, what it needed to be done, but what's continuing on, I said, you know, this, this, you, you just can't do that, Dad. <laughs> so we had we had, and and you want to talk about your your back or your youth. My my dad had an <clears throat> older brother, Edgar, who never was on a farm but lived down in Louisville, Kentucky, and some in my youth. And he asked me the question, "How did you get interested in politics?" And I would think that some of it would be sitting at a, at a at a table with with my uncle Ed and my father and listening to them go at each other because that really I mean, uh -huh. because because he was he was as strong a, of a, of a um, Republican person and and, and 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 as my dad was Democrat and then you going back to going back to uh, some of the history of Moni Township. My grandmother was was a bitchman, and and my grandmother and her the bitchman family were 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 Democrats in Moni Township when you could probably count the Democrats on your thumb and and big toes. <laughs> uh, okay, so and 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 her father. Was un until until Paul Green was elected Moni Township supervisor. He he was uh, he was elected as a as a as a as a Democrat. Now my grandfather Deutsch, my dad's father, who I, I never really got to know because I was two years old when he passed away, but he he was he was a a, a strong Republican. I mean, it, it, as my dad used to say. When when his mother and dad were my when they, when they went and voted, they canceled each other out. Right? <laughs> but 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 you know what? And that might be a thing. Is, but they always voted. But they always voted. Mm -hmm. and so. Did this did the political aspect did that affect family relations, or could people be close family and still have different politics? Or I don't think we had any. I don't, I don't remember. I mean, I, I remember when my uncle and my, no, I don't. I, I don't think it, it did that. I don't think they went into that. They weren't going to talk to each other. But mm -hmm. but maybe they were at an advantage that one lived in my dad lived in Moni and my uncle lived in Louisville, <laughs> so, they, <laughs> so they didn't see each other a lot. That Quite might be often. that might be advantageous yeah. to that. But no, um, but maybe it just made them a little bit sharper in their own opinions because they knew they had a, a willing. An able sparring partner yeah, to and, go at it with, and 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 they would encourage they would encourage the sparring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, they, they kept they, on their toes because yeah. they had to make sure that they were in, in fighting form for the next time they met. And now, now in your generation, how you have brothers and sisters? I have one brother. One brother. One was brother. that David Deutsch? David Deutsch. And, is he the person who was the road commissioner? He's the road oh, commissioner. He's the, oh, okay, that's the yes. Because I don't know anything. I got to ask. Right? So, okay, he's the road okay. commissioner. Was he also a farmer? Yeah, like, okay. So, but right now the operation of the Deutsch family farms are, uh -huh. is is is, is <coughs> my two sons, uh -huh. Kyle and Darren. Kyle oh. and Darren. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's been passed down. The, uh, yeah. Okay. So when it came time, when both you and your brother had become adults, did you keep the farm as a single entity? Did you split it? Did you each buy different land? How did you? No, know? we farm. We kept the land all together. Kept it like it was all together. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, oh. and you have withstood, to your credit, the Illinois political machines being what they are and trying to make your farm an airport. Yeah, we've. Ooh, that's one of the things the that fight. that with with Moni history. Uh -huh. um, I was new to the scene. I really grew up all over. I was born in Nebraska. Lived in Arkansas, Kansas, Missouri, Texas. Oh. Um, my father worked for a pipeline, and when we came up here. Um, and I always wanted roots, deep roots. I mean, I didn't have, because we, we were constantly in mm -hmm. the world. When we moved up here, he was going to work on the Alaskan Pipeline, and I, we lived in Park Forest. 
that was my, I liked that the least of the places because we always lived in small towns or out in the mm -hmm. woods of an area where we were constructing the pipeline. Mm -hmm. But when I got to Moni and got on the county board, you know, you thought farmers just throw a few seeds out in the spring, harvest them in the fall, and that's about all they do, sit on the porch and go to Florida in the winter. Mm -hmm. But when you get to know these men, and it's particularly the Deutsch family, and there are several other families in the Moni area that attribute to the generation after generation mm -hmm. that it is just a smooth progression of caring for the land and making sure mm -hmm. it's better for the next generation. I mean, the only you only go into um, who owns what for the purpose of taxes or inheritance. Mm. And inheritance tax is another evil bane oh, yeah. of the government because... You know, these people have invested all their time and energy. It does not have a value that they would put on it that they would have to pay estate taxes on. It only has a value to the fact that it has fed and nourished four families now, but many generations of Deutsches in this area. Mm -hmm. And they, they're they like a, a, a wonderful wheel that just keeps rolling because mm -hmm. Lee does the animals, his brother is a mechanic, and... They both can do the crops together. Darren is a mechanic. Kyle is a perfectionist. They do the crops together. And they have, in honor of their father, begun to take over the animals because they really, none of them had the interest in animals like yeah. Lee does. I mean, Lee was really mm -hmm. expanded and, and uh, improved the short-term breed all mm -hmm. across this country, but particularly in this area. Tell me about that. Um, well, before that, before you get to this political being that we have in the state of Illinois who wants to take their soil away from them. I didn't get it at first when I, I first got on the county board in 1985 mm -hmm. and that was when that airport was talked about and you could hear economic development and all that but it, I mean you also heard these people who said we're not interested in selling and in the back of your mind you hear people say oh there will be a price. There is no price for these men. There isn't. There are several families that it doesn't matter what you offer them. And I'll say my statement. That <laughs> yeah, which one is this? <laughs> these men go out and get their hands dirty, and the dirt is under their fingers, and they can wash it all away. But the soil is in their soul forever. It would kill them to lose that land. I mean, literally, I have seen it destroy the health of many men and, and families, and destroy some of our neighbors. You and mean when the land's taken away? When their land is taken away change the landscape of the area dramatically mm -hmm. and um, all for naught at this point in time. Oh, yeah, all for naught at this point, yeah. But, but you said improve the shorthorn breed? What, oh yeah, go back to you. Tell me about this. You? Well, well, the, 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 I, the only thing that I'd like to just add a little bit to what Mary Ann said about, uh -huh. about it, it, it's, a, it's affected of, of people that, that we know they're their health. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I I think there's certain people because of the airport being over there has 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 expediated their demise on this earth. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I don't want to leave this topic too quickly either because mm -hmm. this has been something that has been a, a thorn in the side of this area for 40 years. Oh, nice. a, a huge, and I won't say it's been a divisive issue because I don't think there's very many people in this area, farmer or no, who were in favor of that whatsoever. But for myself, sitting on the sideline, I just thought it was terrible, unnecessary, government intervention, a, a sin and a shame on what it was doing to people. Mm -hmm. But until I really started knowing a little bit more and digging in a little bit more, did I realize how how evil I, the whole thing and the eminent domain and, and what they've done with the property that they've bought. And... Mm -hmm. and I mean, it's laying fallow, and it's, you know, years and generations and generations of this. And for something that was never necessary, was never wanted, except by politicians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and, yes. I, and I used, like to use the analogy about that with, with, with what the, those of us that are out there is that it's like, like watch, having it being on TV and, and a tornado warning comes. Mm. Mm -hmm. But 
with, with this, we don't get the all clear. Yeah, no, the all clear doesn't happen. The all clear never comes. It's, it's, never, it's always yeah. out there. I mean, it's, it's, it's not there. it's not flashing across your screen, uh -huh. but it's okay. still there. It's mm -hmm. just it's still there. Mm -hmm. and, and your farm's in the footprint of what they would purchase if they could. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you've been able to resist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So far, we've been. Able and so far, I just I don't like know the tornado were, warnings. We kind of like ignored it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's because you are such a name in this area that everyone admires and respects the Deutsch name and the family, or if it's because you have a fair amount of land that they've kind of left you to you know gobble well, up they, the they e easier, lower hanging fruit first. Or? Oh, we've gotten the eminent domain letters. Mm -hmm. We've gotten all of that. I think it's some of some of some of both. Some of both, both Chrissy, Chrissy mm -hmm. I would have to say. Yeah. Now you want to get to the short ones? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll move on. <laughs> but I think that's important if we're having a permanent record. Yeah. 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 I think the conversation is important to have. You, know, you talked about Republican and Democrat politics dividing people. The airport issue divided many people, many friends. And we've lost many people. Many people just moved away because they didn't want to live over the burden of it. Right. I mean, because it right. was a detriment to their health. They just went somewhere else. They yeah. gave up. Yeah. Well, the farming community, you can't just pick up and move. You can't. No, you can't replace up. the cost. No, no see, we can't. The land is there, and you've got to use the land. And it's good land. And it's been yeah. in their family since 1849. Yes. I mean, since it was Indian territory, right. really, right? right? There were no owners Zachary before. Zachary Taylor signed the deed to their farm. Well, that was before the That's Black amazing. Hawk War, 1846. What? The 1846 was before the Black Hawk War, right? Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. It's 1849. It's a 49. 49. Yeah. But, it, but it is but, Zachary Taylor on okay, your farm. But yeah. Deed to your property. That's amazing. Wow. Uh, I guess I hate it be on record as saying this, I just thought of this because <clears throat> when Marianne talked about us having to relocate, I, I like, I use, I've said it so often because, because we do grow a, a substantial amount of hay and I've always used the, the statement that for relocation for, for the market that we had for hay, we couldn't have, but then with the closing of Belmont Park Racetrack. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, so, 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 some of that's gone. Is, is oh, gone. Yeah. yeah, see, yeah. I mean, that's been, that's been quite a blow, but to, to the credit oh. of Kyle, who's really taken it on, he still seems to find, <clears throat> find the market. market. There are a lot, of, okay, there are, the, the people don't use horses for, but there are a lot of draft, or not draft horses, pleasure horses in this immediate area. Mm -hmm. I mean, Green Garden Township, just the township to the west of Moni, may have more pleasure horses than it does population, even even because people have a five acre track and have three to five horses. So they're, Well, they're, maybe if they're putting the, if the airport is finally being put to bed, that's the emerging market almost yeah. of having if people know that they're not going to lose their yeah you yes. know their yeah. property that, that there would be more and more. Balmoral is turning into it's supposed to be turning into a uh, uh, equestrian, English and equestrian, equestrian riding thing. yeah oh, okay. really and yes. so that might be a high end the um, there's a lady that works at the assessor's office in Crete who said she does English writing and she does it with two facilities at this. Um, company that bought Balmoral also owned and they're very high end and they have wonderful events. They may only be open four to six months a year but it may attract more pleasure horses yeah. who will live in there. It's an emerging market. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah. That would be wonderful. So that much better than factories or a third yeah. airport. Yeah. Right. Sure. Right. Well, but so well, tell us about the short horns. Okay. <laughs> Well, ready, <laughs> ready for the short horns. When I started out in the short horns, mm -hmm. when I was when I bought four bred heifers as a freshman in high school, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and really my purpose was that I was going to have the have the short horns. I had it as my project for vocational agriculture, and and then when I when I went away to college, I was going to probably sell them off and I have the money to go to go to to college well thanks to the help of my father and everything my my herd got built up I really got in, really got to liking the shorthorns and th then 
and they cared for him while I was away to school. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and uh, I, 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 I held every. I was very active in the Illinois Short Run Association. Held every office that you could have. We showed, we showed cattle. We didn't show cattle like some people do, but we. We did show cattle, besides showing at our county fair, we showed at numerous other shows. And I guess the biggest highlight in my life as far as showing cattle is that in 1980, we showed at the Calgary Stampede, mm -hmm. which was a great event. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of the, the highlights in, in, in my life to, mm -hmm. to show at the Calgary Stampede. Too. It's Just a big so, deal. So in a, in, a, in, a, in a and it was a whole different situation in a, in light when you think about mm -hmm. things because the Calgary Stampede goes on over over the Fourth of July. Well, if you're in Calgary, Alberta, the Fourth of July doesn't mean yeah. anything. Yeah. <laughs> except that, except yeah. that it's the Fourth of July. <laughs> it's the fourth day of yeah. July. So no fireworks, huh? No, no fireworks. So you had a, you had a different outlook on it, but. But you met many cattle people, and there isn't a small town across this country where you don't, oh, I know a shorthorn breeder there. That's true. And many of your animals, you would have a sale, or you would encourage other people to go to sell. So your breed, you've worked hard to make sure the birth weights are low, all of those things that you think are important. And now, in fact, we get so many catalogs, I tell him that one thing, everybody else has fantasy football, he should really do a fantasy herd. <laughs> it goes over the he calls people. Yeah. He has three have, guys he I, talks I to all the time. That, and no, that would be that'd be a great thing because <laughs> <clears throat> you know I, you know because of my my condition for Parkinson, you know I could just sit at the computer uh, and I could have these planned meetings, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can. Yeah. That no, it would be, but and Marianne's right. I do have, I do have a lot of. Same I didn't cow. realize that, and you, you're basically an expert, a national figure in the shorthorn cattle world. Pretty much, yes, you are. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know about that. But. Oh, yes, Well, you you're are. also modest, but... Because <laughs> yes, yes, a lot of people know him for that. We, now, are the shorthorns the ones that we eat with such enjoyment? Yes, yes they are. <laughs> that's they're good. kind that's and right. gentle, this just like them. Yeah, they're, they're not those mean old... Charging Angus animals. No. Not only are they kind and gentle, they're, they're delicious. delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. We don't uh, like to talk uh, about see, that part. Uh, uh, well, but they, the Deutsch, a Deutsch well, that, animal you know, has that, a wonderful that, pastoral field and a beautiful place, and he takes care of them and they feed them well. So their life is really luxurious. But what I moment. think where Marianne started into, because and that's been, and I probably may get tears in my eyes bringing this up because. Because of my condition, I'm so happy with what Kyle and Darren have kept. I mean, we don't have many in it anymore, but they've they've kind of really kept kept it going, and they uh, they 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 don't have the the love for the cattle part that that mm -hmm. I have. I mm -hmm. mean, I mean, that's although although we do have. Two grandsons yes, out there. The two too. grandsons out Jack there that, that are really too. that are really you know what I mean they're just, they're ten but they that's 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 that's, that's there. there. That makes I mean, their eyes light up. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They do. So you know. Well, they don't know life without them. Really. Yeah, that's right. So mm -hmm. whose children are your grandsons? Are they, uh, 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 my youngest son, Kyle. 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 Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our and grandchildren, and we really have together. We have eight. We, we, we like so to we claim them. Oh, I have two children that have oh. two children, and he has two children. Yeah, have because we had, we, oh, I have, okay. and, and uh, our grandchildren, uh, I, I refer to them as our grandchildren, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah, I said that, Dave says that too. There are no, there's no such thing as a step grandchild. There isn't. No. no. Chrissy, there no. isn't. There just isn't. I know. And, yeah. and, and, and Anna, who who doesn't really have any of my DNA is probably more like oh me my, yeah. than anybody, <laughs> and we're extremely close. And they are. And we're extremely See, that close. Is a beautiful the thing. environment is a very strong builder of that person. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we're extremely close. I mean, mm -hmm. we're it's just it's just 
Oh, I mean, it's just awesome. I mean, I get, I get tears, in my, tears in my eyes. Well, maybe she'll it. wind up being the short horn yeah, breeder. She, she so, are, are all of your grandchildren kind of close in the area? Uh, it's, it, we just have two that are that are over in, in, in Sandwich, and that's really oh. be basically considered okay. close to the area. Is that where Monica lives? Oh, yeah. yeah. Monica lives in Sandwich? And I do, oh, and then uh, you give me on, besides talking about short horns, of course, Baseball is another oh strong God. thing about me, and and the, the grandson Justin over there in Sandwich is a pretty good baseball player. In fact, this summer he's going to get a chance to play over in Cuba. That's oh. exciting. That's really? so that is exciting. That is wow. Really. So, I mean, how old is he? He 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 just turned seventeen, Chris. <gasps> he's a junior. He's a junior in high school. That's amazing. That's so, wonderful. What so, what position does he play? He's a pitcher, and then he plays third base when he's not pitching. That's awesome. He's good. He's really good. Do you have your own tickets yet for the World Series this year? The, no, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it could be though. You never know. I mean, uh, I mean we don't. We don't. There's no, no talk too much about it. No, we will not. I, I, we, will you not. Know, I, we just I, hope I, to God I, there's not a Murphy somewhere. Yeah, I, 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 I say that we Cub fans have a responsibility to not be arrogant. I agree. I agree. You've never been allowed to be because, arrogant. Because, because, all, no, every win is a gift that you appreciate and savor. Right. And, and, and I, I'll have to say this: that that I have a lot of friends that are White Sox fans and. And well, one of my one of my favorite White Sox stories is that that in 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 1955 I was I was in eighth grade and the Cleveland Indians won 111 games and they were really good and I come home and I told my mother that that I think I was going to be for the Indians in the in the World Series. My mother looked me right in the eye and she says, Lee, don't you realize that we're National League fans? <laughs> so in 2005, when I, because, you know, I had never seen it, but when the White Sox were in the World Sox, Series, yeah, yeah. I went to my mother's gravesite and I said, I'm going to do something worse than rooting for the Cleveland Indians in 1955 because I'm going to root for the White Sox because I wanted to see it. Because I'm not, oh, yeah. I, you know, I just, it, I, it was great. I, I mean, that was a big year. Uh, it was a big year. Oh, yeah. It was a yeah. big year. So. Yeah. yeah, in 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 that year there were no Sox and Cubs fans. I don't no. think there was. No. Yeah, it was just Chicago fans, no. which is kind right. of a good thing. I have a question. When you became a Cubs fan, was your father a Cubs fan? No, okay, nope. there there's a story. This my mother was was the the real baseball person. <laughs> She went to all, she went to baseball games. Well, your name, William Lee. Yeah, my name pitcher? is William Lee, and if you look in the 1930s, there was a pitcher by the name of Bill Lee that was a pretty decent pitcher for the Cubs. In fact, when when Justin played as a 12-year-old out of Cooperstown, we went to the the, the Hall of Fame, and, he, and he's he's there. To, actually, I came back and I told Mary Ann, I said, that story that my mother told me was true. <laughs> <laughs> and he was a great big person physically. Yeah. And 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 also that William is a is a, is a strong Deutsch yeah. name. So yeah. so 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 yeah. my mother was the one that took took me to ball games. Oh, that's uh, in, great. in fact, we 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 went. To, I think, and I you know my memory may be wrong this way, but I think it was the first time that Jackie Robinson played at Wrigley Field that we were there. Wow, and, oh. and 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 we take the we go to Madison, take the take the train, and then take the L on out there. Well, mm -hmm. my father, my father, he he he. When I played sports, I mean, he was very supportive of it. I mean, very. I mean, and and and, and in fact, they built a base. We built a baseball field out on out on the farm, but but he he. He he used to say he's not in the professional players because they get paid too blank much money. <laughs> well, I wonder what he would be saying nowadays. Oh my goodness! So, yeah. So, so I had to deal where I didn't have my father take me to ball games. I had my mother, and <laughs> and, and, and 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 also you guys or you, previously you interviewed Virgil Hall and Virgil Hall's mother and my mother were were that was my mother's. Uh, aunt and and she was a diehard Cub fan too. So, 
Yeah, I got it from my dad's side of the family. I don't know if my mom cared, but yeah. dad was the ultimate Cubs fan. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Really and it was my grandpa. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. always somebody, my grandpa Kerr and my mom's dad, yeah. who I sat and watched the 69 Cubs with yeah. and broke. Oh, oh the 69 Cubs. Oh, my, my, hey, that's my, we, I was, I was out in Montana d delivering some shorthorn cattle and picking up a bull. And that's when the Cubs went in that big swoon. My mother, she... My mother's disposition was on, on, on how the Cubs did. <laughs> okay? I mean, I kid you not. And, but then she'd be if there were fresh cookies, they were women. She got cruel. And, and she'd tell me, she'd tell me, you know, she, she'd say, you know, because she told me back back in the 30s, back there, they won 21 games in a row. See? And I said, yeah. So, I suppose if you can win, win 21, you can lose 21. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, gosh, yeah. So did, were you like, you listened to it on the radio? I mean, we, I grew up, I love listening to Cubs on the radio. Yeah. Yeah, just because oh. I like the, the announcers. Oh. All right. There's, there's another story. There's another story. Uh-oh. All right. We, I, I did, really loved listening to the, on the radio, but do you know that back in, when I was a great, you know, they used to be on WIND? That was before they went on WGN radio. Oh, and W I N G is isn't that strong. <laughs> so no. uh, mm -hmm. right? No, no, it's not that strong. Yeah. So so if it, depending on when it got to be got to be uh, sundown, the the power the, the you I'd be listening to the cup game and then it got you couldn't get it in. Yeah, yeah the, the humidity makes the signals weaker. Yes, yeah. and then and then I used to when, before when I was at, I don't know nine or ten or so I'd drive the tractor for the, drive the baler and the, and the Cubs and, and and that was before you had they, you had all these radios on tractors you know you, you mm -hmm. didn't, I had a portable a little portable radio and you, 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 you I'd have that in, in the toolbox where you couldn't hear it real well but but I, yeah. you talk about listening to the Cubs so I I I I talked them into stopping for a rest for Baylor and then I go listen to what the Cubs <laughs> are doing so. So did all this help prepare you for being on the board of Will County? <laughs> I'm thinking, well, I you're think that's part of it. Well, no, what I mean is like Will County's big. There's Joliet and then there's like Moni Township and this whole little section over here. I, I can't resist thinking that uh, that having your voice heard uh, in the county board was probably a challenge. No? It's what now? Was, was having your voice heard on the county board a challenge at all because you're from the far east end of Will County? Well, I, 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 uh, I think, so. I mean, we, we, we people that live out here in the east do think that we, that we're, we're overlooked to a certain mm -hmm. degree. Only because it's true. Harlem Avenue, you probably know where Harlem Avenue is, that's kind of considered the the board, and then east of there, it's, it's oh, that's the line, huh? That's yeah. The yeah, get, yeah. Like, yeah. East of there, it's sort of no man's land. Okay. Because yeah. mm -hmm. because uh, I'm listening to you, it's like you're talking about your your your, your father and your uncle, or like you've got the political differences there, and then you've got. I'm hearing you talk a lot about people who have differences, and you're and you're working right in between them. So I'm going, must have prepared him for being on the county board. I don't know. <laughs> well, my favorite say. one is that you're UCC and you're Catholic. Yes. I think that's a pretty big difference oh, yeah. that you have made work oh, yeah. totally oh. well. Yeah. Well, luckily yeah. for us, you I, know, Catholics can go to church anywhere. I mean, when I was a little girl, you weren't allowed to go to church unless you had to, yeah. no. a priest's permission first. But I, no, it's worked out very well. I think we have a, a real distinct advantage in making that work, though, because our children are all adults. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you 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 don't you it don't is, yeah. you, you don't right. you, you yeah. don't you're not going through that situation. Yeah. See. Plus, the United Church of Christ is really happy, happy. for anybody to come. Oh, absolutely. You know, there's there's no there's no closed doors there. No, not at all, not at all. So tell me about growing up at church. Church has always been a big part of your life. Yes. Well, I it, I I I I was confront. <coughs> I was confirmed at, I was baptized, and I was confirmed at St. Paul's, and 
Marianne and I, when we got married, said that we were married at St. Paul's, and undoubtedly I'll be, my funeral will be at St. Paul's. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, uh, I guess I, I have, I was there. When, uh, Reverend Walter Bless was the pastor for when when I when, when I was in confirmation, and we 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 became. Very good friends because of really it goes back to baseball. <laughs> he loves he, he loved baseball, so we come and then and then my parents, you, you know, we we didn't do exceptional maybe amount of socializing, but my parents felt to, that you invited the pastor to supper at least once a year. I mean that was just, mm -hmm. that was the mm -hmm. standard that you did well. I think we had Reverend Walter Bless more than that because we got we got we got a, you know we had that connection. So mm -hmm. so. Um, That's I, very interesting. I think you have a. I think you it, it, as you come through, you you have a fondness for the, for the pastor that confirmed you that you that you have a you have a connection. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. right. Although you want to my story about Reverend Clum? Yeah, class? tell me your Reverend Clum story because he was the pastor that confirmed me. Okay, uh, <laughs> it was Reverend Clum. Uh, all right, Rever Rever and this was uh, I was in uh, I, I, I was it was this was 1960, so I I was in college, so so Reverend Reverend Clum gave his and I think I came home that week. No, I was I was during the break between my freshman and sophomore year. So Reverend Clum gives his trial sermon. So we we're, we're eating my, with my parents, and and my mother says, "Well, because there was twenty five people voted not to not, not to have him." See, mm -hmm. so my mother says, uh, "Boy, I wonder who those twenty five people were that voted not to have Reverend Clum." And I pipe up and I said, I don't know who the other 24 were, but I know who one of them was. But you have to, re he was, he was old. I mean, you, when you're a freshman in college, he wasn't that appealing. And I went on a church council. I mean, we became, we, we became very close, okay, or at least close. I mean, but, but, but that's just, that's just the, the how, how, uh, how a freshman in college feels about about Well, Bishop. I think with Reverend Clum, it took a while to warm up to him, and you had to do all the warming. Okay. Because <laughs> oh. he was very, he was very oh. strict. He was very. I mean, my mother loved him too, but again, he was not. He was not Ronald Reagan. He was not Mr. Personality. Oh, yeah. You know, and he, he had a he had, personality. That's true. But he did have. His wife was a very warm person, though. And I don't remember them that well you because I was I was more uh, you know I was a little yeah, bit younger. Yeah, but so. But yeah, no, she was from everything I've heard. She was, and and again, like you say, you do connect, and I always liked Reverend Clum, but yeah. he was straight as an arrow, and yeah, and, he was. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That happened quite often with you, though. With, with me. People that you met that you would sometimes come with. I don't think I particularly like change, and you might have a little bias behind the fact that it might change. I mean, when you talk about being on the county board, and he was one of few Democrats at that time when he first got on that. But he found quite often when he got there, he could win over the respect and the, the mm -hmm. uh, support of all kinds of people for issues. So, well, the county board issues really. It's a sin that we they have to run as Democrat and Republican because our issues are not political. Mm -hmm. They really mm -hmm. aren't. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be. It's really, I think, township and county government in some instances were put there by the, the specific parties to build the army of people that would help in big uh -huh. general elections. Mm -hmm. okay. But sure. for the most part, zoning, which is one of the big issues we take care of, that's not a political issue. It shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it got there. Mm -hmm. uh, courthouses, jails, those are the mm -hmm. other things we take care of. Highways, mm -hmm. doesn't mm -hmm. really matter if you're Democrat or Republican, you need to get to work on mm -hmm. a good road. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. And there were a lot of those that if it was picked by a Republican, sometimes you had an idea that it should have been a Democrat, even though we had the majority, but then you got along with the person after you didn't vote for him quite well. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, there are a number of uh, 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 number one is 
who was brought in to be in charge of land use. Ron Kutowski. I voted against him, mm -hmm. and I'll have to say that when I gave my farewell, he was one of the people I acknowledged because we just became extremely close. We, mm -hmm. we, we just really mm -hmm. did. Because it didn't matter if you were a Republican or Democrat. No, and it, didn't, no, I think and it didn't matter to him. Him, I mean, no. no. So we, he was. Well, that's the sign of a really good politician. Yeah. You know, is right. that you are yourself first and foremost, whatever party you're running under. And then if you stay true to that, I think, which I'm sure you always have. Well, I get, I get, I, I have a, 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 a problem with, with politicians or whatever they're to not remember where they came from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do. And I, I wear that, I got short sleeves on today, but I wear that on my sleeves. Mm -hmm. I, I think we were at a point, at a time too, but in, with a group of people who were really, we only had three or four that had come there with the idea that this was a stepping stone, I'm going to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. The majority of people got on the, on the county board when I was, my during my tenure, were really there to do county work. They enjoyed doing county work, so mm -hmm. they weren't out to undo somebody else's um, mm -hmm. political future. They really were interested in getting the right thing done for the county. And mm -hmm. It wasn't, I mean, I, not to pick on any party, we have mm -hmm. all too often now People who say no, if somebody else has another idea, mm -hmm. and that's not what government's about. Yeah. Governing is yeah. coming together to get the best idea. It's Democrats, Republicans, everybody getting in the room, sharing the thought, and finding out what's going to best serve mm -hmm. the majority. Instead of, I only can support something that's from our. That I mean that's mm -hmm. not governing. So if I was going to ask you, like for an example, something you can point to where you did that, where you brought people together, the two of you, or one of you individually, when you were working with the county, you could say, this is an example of where we were able to bring people together and get something done. I can Anything? tell you something right off the bat, and something you and your father hated the forest preserve, didn't see any use in the forest preserve, didn't think we needed to preserve land, with his dad, who... It was interesting because when I first started talking to his father, he would call me. I was widowed at the time. He would call me all t early in the morning because we were really aggressive about getting Forest Preserve land bought at that time. Mm -hmm. And he was very much against it. I don't need any open spaces. I said, well, yes, Mr. Deutsch, sitting on your porch, I can certainly understand why you don't feel that way because you have lots of open space. But we have many areas that... Really, in this area out here, it's a remnant oak wood that's never been touched. Um, the headwaters of Lake Michigan, Plum Creek, go right through all of this. Very important to the bigger picture and that we need to preserve that. At the same time, you don't want development. You don't want development to happen. But, I mean, so that Forest Preserve is one way to do that, and it's a good way. I mean, you didn't always agree with it either. No. But you became a pretty good supporter at the end. Well, yeah, look where we're living at. Yeah, now where we are. <laughs> but I mean, we had we're on the county board, and we tried to pass this, uh, we did a, um, an extension of a, of a purchasing like $95 million worth of land. But we did it by reference. I mean, we did a bunch of purchases beforehand that we had uh, money on hand to prove to people that we were really interested in developing complete ecosystems for protection and also developing areas where people could go out and really enjoy the big outdoors. Mm -hmm. And when we were on the board before that, there was a group, there was like three of us. It was mostly male board, had no interest in doing this, were anti, and we worked solidly for two or three years. So we finally, we were down to one vote. I literally had to go into the men's bathroom and grab that one vote out because he tried to walk away and not vote. So we could get that passed, but we passed it, and then since then passed by referendum with the public two other very large purchases of land, mm -hmm. and we have wonderful spots now in Will County that, and in this area, I mean that's I also I know I hear when I was on the board everybody said people in the east get forgotten, but well, we got more acreage bought out here because there was. It was worth buying too, mm -hmm. and the price was right, mm -hmm. and there were ecosystems that we could complete. Mm -hmm. But we got a lot of, I mean, Good Now Grove and all of that, and mm -hmm. the and the development of that. Money Reservoir, we heard all kinds of heck from people of money because that was really? really just a little 
steam pond that mm -hmm. people used to go and fish in, and we closed it out, told mm -hmm. people you can't fish there, and it took us about, mm -hmm. I think it was six to eight years to get it developed to what it is now. It's lovely. And it's beautiful. I mean, it's a nice, just one of our most visited preserves in the county, so we get people from all over to come out here. And we didn't always have, you didn't always believe in the forest preserves, but we worked hard to get that. One of the most visited preserves in the county. Yes. That's fascinating. It's well. quite a legacy in yes. itself. Yeah. Because yeah. it was, like Marianne said, it was it was a stop off for the, when they had the steam, steam engines. engines. Trains, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, if you, and if you look at the, the, the topography of Moni, from there up up to the Stunko Road is all on the incline in, mm -hmm. in, in, in Moni. Oh, yeah, How's record. Moni changed from the times when you can first remember Moni, the town? Well, I, I, you know, my my grandmother Deutsch lived just two houses north of where you and Dave and your mother currently live. Oh, did she? Two yeah, houses north? Just two houses oh, north. Oh, I didn't that know that. And and so, so I I I, I can remember. I, I one thing I can very well remember is that I can remember that having the steam engine trains going through and that porch that if you if, if if you had good clothes on and you sat on that porch as a little young boy, you got it you got it all full you're of full of soot. So you were full <laughs> of soot. <laughs> that that's one thing I can remember. I I can I can remember coming that that when we that when we weren't always able to to because of was having the dairy cows to make it to church that I'd go to, that I'd go to Sunday school and then I just walked I'd walk to my grandmother's house. Uh -huh. I, mean, I mean that that that, uh, that that's a, I, I I spent a lot of quite a bit of time in, 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 in that house really. And and, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I mean that's one of my memories. I, I could I I, I well, when you went to the store did you go was there a little store in town? Did you ever go to? Well, see, I had more. I I had more experience, or more there, Marianne, in Madison to go visit oh, my other, other grandma, grandparents that I, that we walked down downtown. downtown and Madison. the one that lived in Moni was that a Deutsch grandmother? That was a Deutsch. Deutsch she grandmother. was the one that was. She 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 was Magdalena Deutsch. She she was the one that was hard of hearing. I mean, I mean, that's how that that that's one of the reasons I say. How come my voice? I always speak up so loud because as a little kid, my parents said, "Now you have to talk up loud so Grandma can hear you." <laughs> so I've been, I've been talking loud ever since. See? Yep, yeah. So yeah, yes. And there was the Bardos relative. I went Bardos, my gra Grandma and Grandpa Bardos that, that lived in Madison, and they lived in Madison. Do you, are you familiar with Madison? Uh -huh. You know, there's a brick house. Do you know where the post office used to be in Madison? Uh -huh. Then to, to, to the north, to the north of there was a brick house. Okay, right there. That was the house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. And so then some of my cousins, we'd go there to visit on Sunday afternoons, and we'd walk, we'd walk downtown to 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 uh, Matt to. To the confectionery store or something like that. So, yeah, yeah. Huh. Tell them all the schools you went to. I mean. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. All right. I grew up during consolidation. So when I was in f first grade, I went to a one-room school, which which is, that building is still there. On Highland Avenue. In Highland Avenue. Highland Avenue. It's, it's a it, little it, house. Roy, Roy Yaling lives in it. The I'm trying to think where Highland Avenue is. Highland, Highland Avenue is the one that's just to the to, that goes dead dead ends in the Pauling and then goes to the Cremoni Road and then if you kept going it would go to Deer past Deer Creek okay. whatever uh -huh. it's called Deer yeah. Creek. Middle school. Yeah, the, the middle, middle school. school. So so I was in first grade that we had it was it was one 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 through eight, there was twelve students. In one room school. Huh? One room school. Wow. And so, then Christy, you know, then from where this is, I could see, I could see my house. I could see the farm. Yeah. So yeah. once and this was in the beginning. You didn't like going to school. So so I just took Major off. Shoes. I just took off during recess and just walked home. <laughs> <laughs> so my parents brought me back. <laughs> well, then consolidation. Came because that was the last. That was when they 
consolidated all the, those one-room schools. So I was going to be in second grade, and my parents didn't really think that, so I was either to go to, to Moni or to Crete, and at that time there would be like 30, 35 students in your class, and they didn't yeah. think I was ready for that big. So, so I went to Trinity Lutheran for second grade. Hmm. And then, and then, then because they ended up having a, a, a big flux of, of uh, consolidations of some places being overcrowded, they 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 opened up the school at Gunnar, the, the it was the Gunnar School, which is up on the hill. That building is there, it's still there. If you go on the Gunnar Gunnar Road, if you, you it, 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 it's it's on the it's on the north side. It's on the top of that hill. So I went to third and fourth grade there. Then, my dad was on the school board, and I was going to be. They were going. There weren't going to be many of us in fifth grade because it was. So then, so then I, I, I. They were going to trans, transfer. That I had the option to either go to Crete or to Moni. Well, we had a better to go out to to where to live to get to the school bus. It was better to go to the east to go to Crete. So I went to Crete Elementary. So I was in fifth grade. I was a fifth grader. It was the fourth school I ever went to, and I slept in the same bedroom all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I never moved. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, really, you know, that you wouldn't think it would be that way. That that is something I didn't realize. I didn't realize the one-room schoolhouses were even still in existence when you would have been old enough to attend. Yeah. Wow. And needless to say, we never had kindergarten. So. No, no. Did Miss that Grandma Banfield? Yeah, no, I never went to kindergarten either. Yeah. Now, yeah. being that Deutsch is a German name, did any of your grandparents speak German in the house? We didn't. That, for my mother being a Bartos, she was much better at speaking German. <laughs> the, my, the, the German that my father used was not. You know, it was Schlecht not Deutsch. social German. <laughs> yeah. You knew a prayer. You Glad knew, Deutsch. Dad cool. told me you knew a prayer and you knew when you were in trouble. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was Glad Deutsch. I like that. So, what other stories? But do you, you know, have? you talk. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say. I was just going to say what Margaret did. That that Bobby Fanley was your uncle, right? Yeah. He was the one that used to mow my grandmother's lawn and all that. Oh my goodness! Because you know, I think yeah, was just right. I yeah, mean, that's just yeah. that's just where I live now. Yeah, right where you live now. But he 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 was the lawn caretaker for for the neighborhood. Huh? For, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So your grandma's house was right between Margaret's and my house, almost smack dab in the middle between. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Nice young family in that house now. Is there? They just yeah. Had two boys. Oh, yeah. nice. One just, just to, had this. this yeah, maybe month. six weeks. Yeah. Six oh, nice. Weeks ago. Oh, nice. Yeah, oh. Very nice. So your grandma would be happy. Yes, yeah. yeah. And I can remember, like when 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 it'd be in a parade in Moni, and you'd go by there, and there'd be some people out there, and I and I would say to them. I know what I know. I know what the inside of your house looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you followed that up real fast because my grand. Not just saying I know what the inside of your house looks like. <laughs> I was there recently. You know, that could get you in big trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I hate to wind this up. We're coming to the end. I just wondered if there's any other stories that you have for us because I'm thinking we may need to do a part two with Lee Deutsch. <laughs> <laughs> No, not really. It's been it's it's been a fast time, though. Yeah, it, is. Yeah. it has. We told you it would go fast. Yeah. Yeah. It has been a quick time. Or, or actually, I want to ask it this way: If when it comes to understanding Moni, because you know, because uh, like our roots, our deep was written in 1971, nice history. But I'm especially interested in what's happened in the last 40, 45 years. Mm. So, if you're going to tell people in the future something you consider important about what's happened to Moni that you want them to know, what would that be? Can I, can I swing the question around a little bit different? Sure. Uh-huh. As, as a person that grew up, I never thought I'd see a traffic light in Moni. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. Simple, okay. Uh, okay. We have four. Huh? Yeah. We have four now. Yeah. I know, but I never thought, I never thought I'd see a traffic every mm-hmm. night, just never, let alone mm-hmm. four. I mm-hmm. never thought I'd see that. So, so there you go. So it's there. And I, and and, and I, I, I just had a little bit of, you know, 
it, it's okay in my mind if I say something negative about Moni, mm -hmm. but if somebody else does, my dander gets up. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I sure. like you. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> we, are with you there. we are with you there. I, I mean, you know, it's okay. Uh -huh. It's okay for me to be critical, but don't you be critical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I would say the one thing that you would want, I would want it, the people in the future to know, because I'm, I'm a newcomer. Mm -hmm. I will always be a newcomer. I've, oh, Sandra. Um, My mother is, came in 1948. She yeah. still considers herself yeah. a newcomer. Yeah. 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 Is that you don't forget the history that brought Moni about and the German farmers and the fact that they made this little town and don't... I mean, um, it's wonderful to have new people in town, but mm -hmm. you know, don't forget like that you are in a farm community, that you do need to slow down when they're harvesting or they're planting, and that we do need to sometimes allow trucks to go through town that are divisible loads, that are farming loads. Oh, yes. You know, that those things that made this town great have to you have to respect and re let them remain. Don't mm -hmm. don't try to buy them out and plop a bunch of concrete and put an airport on top of oh, it. Okay, Absolutely. Yeah. And don't and this is don't forget your roots right, as a person. Right. Although I mean, I mean, of course, I'm I have a great big advantage saying that because my, because I have those roots, like Marianne talks about. That, that doesn't so I I mean I can talk I can talk big that way, mm -hmm. but, but I can still feel that way. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you know what? When when Marianne was talking about her roots and not having had any, David's the same way, and he can say that he lived in you know, 20 different towns in mm -hmm. however many years. You know, they moved about every two years. Mm -hmm. And when he came to Moni and when he started going to St. Paul's, this That's is more wonderful. home. That's home. This is That's more true. home than any place else has ever yeah. been in his life. Right. And everybody either has it yeah. or yearns for it. Right. So we should all appreciate it if right. we have it. Right. Right. And, yeah. and, you, and respect it. You, mm -hmm. you, you folks and Margaret, you know, I mean, you you're living in houses that are Moni roots. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, really, yeah. you are. I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, and I don't take that lightly either. No, it's yeah. just don't. My grandparents died in my house. My mom passed in my house, and two of my sons were born in my house. That's see, really that's, nice. okay. so, See, that's yeah. wonderful. See, that's yeah. like, that that that's that's kind of what 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 Kyle and Kelly have. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. living out there where, they, where, where they live. I mean, that's. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is one because Marion, I've never really met you, mm -hmm. but it seems like you fit in so well. She I, mean, does. I, I would never not know that you were a charming farmer's wife because you seem to have a love for oh, yeah. his history and oh, yeah. who he is as a man. Oh, yeah. and I love this. This Thank has you. been really wonderful. Oh, Thank you. you. You guys it's make true. a lovely couple. It well, is true, though. It's you know, it's not an easy thing. You both came no. from some real hard issues, but right. it's it's very neat how you've kind right. of brought that family and right. kept that tradition. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And we have those eight grandchildren. And the, you know, to carry it on. Yeah. To carry it on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think if you would have gone back a few years to either one of us when we were much younger and said that. In the future, you will live with a farmer who will be a Democrat. You will be <laughs> He's not going to be Catholic. Yeah. Uh, no. no. Then I was, because for a while we lived in the city, so I was a city girl. Yeah. I lived yeah. for nine years in Chicago, so I would have. And I loved it. I mean, but I only loved the show. I loved that, and I loved, I loved being on but I loved mm -hmm. the land more. Well, yeah. absolutely. A, a story of Sharon, my first wife that passed away, she says that, that they kidded her out there in Iowa because because she had said growing up in a, a small town of Iceville mm -hmm. that she didn't never wanted to marry a farmer. And so then so when her and I married, she she kind of, she changed the story. She said, well, I just said I never wanted to marry an I am. <laughs> <laughs> so she did a good job. You're different in Illinois. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good note to say goodbye. Yeah. Thank, goodbye. You Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Yeah. That was wonderful. Yeah. That was wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much. No two hours went by. Would you do? No. No. It's just flies. That's, that's a